good morning and welcome to today's podcast today i shall be dealing with john fowles the french lieutenant's woman this novel was published in 1969 and today i shall be dealing with this novel including its background plot character stylistic features and themes in his non fictional essay john fowles the fiction's name is notes on a unfinished novel dear john fowles writes i'm quoting it here you are not trying to write something one of the victorian novelist forgot to write but perhaps something one of them failed to write and remember the etymology of the word a novel is something new it must have relevance to the writers now so don't ever pretend you live in 1867 or make sure the reader knows its pretense here he has also told us the seed of the novel that is in autumn 1966 he saw a woman who stands at the end of a deserted quay and stays at the sea this woman actually looked like she belongs to victorian age including the features like she seems to be a mysterious or having vaguely romantic qualities now the background of this novel we find in auric o u r i k a written in 1823 which is having a tragic affair between african woman and french military personnel and this african uh, woman and this french military personnel could be uh, taken as sara woodruff and this french lieutenant's uh, military man This novel was adapted into a film in 1981 and also it was adapted into a British play in 2006. Now coming to the plot of this novel this novel is about the relationship between two individuals an amateur naturalist Charles Smithson and a former governess Sarah Woodruff she is the protagonist of this novel Now the setting of this novel is actually the mid 19th century or the Victorian age and it opens in coastal town of Lee Reims in 1867. Uh now coming to the characters of this novel we have Sarah Woodruff who is also known as tragedy and the you know the french lieutenant's who we have second character charles smithson who is a baronet and he is an orphan dependent on his uncle sir robert and also he is an amateur paleontologist he is a naturalist and a man of science another character we have charles's fiance Ernestina Freeman and she is a daughter of a wealthy tradesman as well now we have fourth character mrs tomkins she is a widow whom sir robert marries and she is having a child from another man when the novel opens we see sara woodruff uh, who is staring at the sea she is a deserted woman she is uh, jilted by a french sailor uh, who is actually this a uh, french lieutenant his name is vagunis and sara is waiting for his return she is also the servant of mrs potnis and uh, her uh, house is uh, is in malboro Now she spends her spare time mostly looking at the sea on the cob a stone jetty at line regions and walking on where 
performance a large wood where Charles and Ernestina first encounter Sarah. From this point, Charles became curious about this woman, though he is having a fiancé, Ernestina. And this curiosity turns into a passionate relationship with Sarah. So as uh, Sarah and Charles keeps on meeting, Sarah reveals to him much of her history and requests to help her or support her. Here, Sir Robert, the uncle of Charles, gets engaged to Mrs. Tompkins, resulting in Charles's loss of inheritance. For this loss of inheritance, Ernestina becomes depressed. Now, you can see in this novel, the marriage proposals, affairs, consideration of marriage according to inheritance of property, class consciousness, love triangle, and all these things actually are the element of Victorian novel. Now coming to the novel, <clears throat> Charles falls deeply in love with Sarah and admits her to and uh, <clears throat> advises her to leave Lyme for X day to enjoy her freedom. This is so because he feels that making Sarah free, he himself would feel free. And then soon Sarah leaves and Charles uh, seemed to be worried about her. And then uh, soon he finds a note for him by Sarah. Here the Sam, Charles's servant, finds or tries to figure out that there is something fishy about their relationship. And he tries to blackmail Charles basically for money so that he could spend his rest of the life easily with his wife Mary. Now here we see another character, Mrs. Tompkins, who is Robert's wife. She becomes pregnant by not uh, Robert, but by a butler. And then Robert, out of uh, uh, depression, he actually uh, gives the hope to Charles that he will not disinherit, disinherit him. Now coming to Charles, he admits that he is marrying Ernestina not out of love for her, but he actually loves Sarah and he now uh, resolves that. Now here we see that Charles uh, sets out to warn Ernestina's father about his uncertain inheritance in the pretext of ending this relationship. And maybe he wants to go with Sarah. While returning from uh, Ernestina's uh, home, he stops to stay to visit Sarah. And from this point, the self-conscious narrator we see who uh, actually intervenes throughout the novel and later becomes a character in the novel itself, offering three different conclusions to the novel for readers to choose. Here again, uh, getting multiple endings and uh, getting the chance of reader response, we see that we have postmodern fiction. We can say these multiple endings as three fake endings. And here we see what could be done between Charles. Okay, so the first ending is, uh, we can suppose that, where the uh, character Charles doesn't visit Sarah at all. He reaffirms his love for Anastina and marries her. They have children, uh, but their relationship is not a happy one. But here the narrator rejects this ending as a daydream by Charles. And uh, we can see the narrator and Charles are sharing the same compartment in the train uh, before the second and third endings. And here we can uh, see the narrator 
is uh, giving us opportunity for some assumptions and also telling us about the form. Now in the second ending we have the uh, physical relationship between Charles and Sarah and here Charles comes to know that though she was the mistress of uh, this French officer but she has uh, preserved her virginity. So he ends his engagement with Ernestina and sends a letter to Sam the servant who purposefully or intentionally does not deliver this letter to Sarah and she doesn't know about this fact and she flees to London and here Charles goes abroad from Europe to United States. Uh, then when after two years he knew about uh, Sarah's uh, address, he hurries back to her and we see that Sarah is uh, living in the house of D.G. Rossetti, the one who has written the blessed demosel. Now at the end of uh, this ending we see that uh, Sarah and Charles is having the relationship and uh, they are having a child. So this ending is uh, romantic and it gives us a hope. Now at the third ending we see that narrator reappears outside the residence of DG Rossetti and turns back his pocket watch by 15 minutes. Here Charles meets Sarah. Their reunion is uh, not the romantic one but a sad. The parentage of the child is not made clear. So uh, we see that Sarah is a now changed person and she has no interest in reviving her relationship with Charles. Charles leaves rejecting uh, Sarah and this rejection gives us the hint of unconventional but a realistic situation and we can see that this uh, feature has the relevance to postmodernist technique where what happens we are refused or constrained to our imagination coming to his stylistic features in Linda Hutchins works it's an ironic play which has multiple layers it's a postmodern fiction using postmodern techniques and narratives by this I mean that it has parody, intertextuality, stereography, metafiction and multiple endings. It parodies Victorian fiction and tradition. Regarding metafiction, it questions the role of historian who claims past. Uh, regarding uh, metafiction, we can also uh, say that it has a self-reflexive narration and it bridges between different disciplines of literature, history, science, etc. We can also see that in this novel, in each chapter, we have at least one epigraph taken from Victorian literature, rather fiction or non-fiction. And this epigraph actually sets the tone for each chapter. Uh, it has Victorian prose style and also 20th century modernist perspective. Here we now and again see that Fowles uh, implements authorial intervention. By that I mean that he is an omniscient narrator and uh, he himself becomes a character in the novel and uh, he uh, is the traveler in the first compartment with the, uh, with the character. And also he analyzes the form and himself writes this form. Now in the novel we find literary allusions here as intertextuality. Here we see that this novel includes discussions of scientific theories of uh, Charles Darwin, political theories of Karl Marx, Poetical and fictional works of Arnold, Tennyson, Hardy, A. H. Clough, Jane Austen, etc. Here we see the discussion uh, with uh, Charles and Mr. Freeman about uh, Darwin's origin of species. We see the themes like existentialism, feminism, the great Victorian dilemma, 
experimental uh, narrative sexual repression and gender theories in this novel i hope you understood this novel thank you so much